Let's go. Let's go. So, I'm going to be talking about the Behringer X Touch 1 for FL Studio today. And that's this thing the mm -hmm. universal control surface. It's a singular fader that's motorized that correlates to whatever doll you have. And when you first open the, the box, you, you will notice that you have a whole bunch of different inserts like these. This is the user one. And they have different ones. This is Pro Tools. They have different ones, so they all correlate which each one of the buttons actually on the control surface. So they have uh, Ableton Live, they have Cubase, they have Logic, they have Studio One, Reaper, Pro Tools, and more. They have uh, MIDI modes, all types of different inserts that you can use and the modes you can switch between, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty genius, actually. I mean, it's just all on the fly. Each one of these have 3M tape on the back, so you can actually stick it to the surface itself if you want to keep it permanent. However, I switch between the user one and the Pro Tools one, so I don't even pull it off. I just pretty much stick it on there. And then even if I want to, I could just set the other one on top just like this. And I, I'm still able to press the buttons. Pretty, pretty good, however, I just usually normally take them off. Preference, so you do what you want. Now, today I'm just mainly going to be talking about FL Studio and the X-Touch 1 and how it correlates and implements well with it. So, I'm going to put this generic little uh, user, whatever it's called, user insert back on it. Uh, with my uh, beautiful penmanship. So we're going to open up FL Studio and I'm going to walk through it. So when you first open up FL Studio, obviously you have to connect it, you know, like an actual MIDI controller or anything else that's MIDI. So you go to MIDI settings and then obviously you press refresh device if it has, if it haven't already listed itself. Refresh. You'll see X Touch 1 pop up. It won't be to this yet. So make sure you have to put it to Mackie Control Universal right here. And make sure that the Master Sync is also well. Now, it's on port 11. The only reason I know it should be on port 11 is because I was browsing. I was getting errors before where it was not working. And it was causing it to crash. And uh, FL Studio was acting weird. So I looked it up, Googled, and I found on the forum, which I believe was on ImageLine's forum. And if I can find the user, whoever it is, I'll give credit to them in the actual description. But they stated that the controller actually had to be on port 11. I don't know why. and didn't do too much research on it. But as soon as I did it, it worked perfectly. And if you can see the screen right here, well, first off, let me actually go back a few steps. To switch between the modes, once it's power on, is you hold the stop button, press in the rotary, and you'll see mode. Now you switch between all the different modes. Standard is the Mackie Control Standard, Ableton Live, all the different ones I was naming before. You have Huey Pro, Huey Standard, MIDI Relative, all of that. Well, we're going to use Mackie Control Standard. <clears throat> so you select that, boom. You can change the LCD brightness right after that. So if you're okay with 50%, you can go up to 100, do what you want. You press it in again. Then you have the LED brightness, which is obviously the colors and the LEDs underneath each one of the keys and the functions. So 100% for me, you do what you want again. Press it in one more time, boom, you're good. So when you come back into the program right here, once you go to X-Touch 1, Mac and Control, set to port 11. So if you're not on port 11, you'll see that it's not linked. As soon as you go to port 11 on the uh, X-Touch 1, it would actually show link right here in the little LCD screen. Boom, boom, linked. And we're now in control of FL Studio. So you can close this now. Uh, we're just going to throw a few things in the mixer. So we're going to do this, this, boom, 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 bam. 
So hope you like my sound effects. Now we have actual uh, sounds in the mixer as well that now should correlate with the actual uh, X-Touch 1. So first thing you notice is you have, I named BPM. Um, I really don't remember why I did that. But anyway, this is the bars and the beats or the minutes and seconds. So if you press this, you can change between bars and you can change it back to minutes and seconds. And it actually correlates up here on the dialog as well as in the program. So I'm going to stick in minutes and seconds. You have master select. Now this actually is like a global control. So right now we're on this symbol 808. So if I move the volume for it, it'll move in the mixer. Now if we want to control the actual output of the whole uh, FL Studios volume, we would turn on master select and the LCD goes black and this lights up. Now once you control the volume, the actual volume of FL Studio itself will be adjusted. And that's all global. So that's just a heads up. You know you're a master select if this is lit and this is not lit. So boom, back. So channel select. Once this is green, that means whatever channel you're on is actually selected. So if we change the channel, which is these two buttons here, it's not lit because we're not actually selected for this one. So if we go back, you'll see that this one is. So if you're trying to figure out what channel you're on, you just go through and you're like, green, boom, that's what channel I'm on. If you want to choose a different channel, you actually go to that channel, then hit channel select, and that's the one you're on now. So boom, you're not on that one anymore. You're now on this one. Pretty good to keep in mind if you, you know, trying to keep up with which, which whatever you're doing. If you want to mute the channel, you would actually hit the channel mute right here. And as you can see, it correlates to the mixer. And now the actual, uh, the dot for that actual instrument is now unlit, which means it's muted, obviously. And it turns red unless you know you're muted over here. So you don't have to worry about it. You know whether or not you're muted. So unmute, boom, back. You have channel solo. So you can solo the channel as well. Boom, everything else is unlit except for that one instrument that you were already on. So you undo it, everything's back. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can actually arm the disc for each channel itself. So I don't know if too many people know about this in FL Studio, but this is arm disc for recording for that one channel. So you can actually hit this and you will record that channel to wherever spot you have it listed, which is pretty handy. So you do what you want. So that's what that is. These are all function buttons, which are not to anything right now. I haven't figured out and found anything that actually uh, correlates to it yet, but there are programmable. I just have not spent the time with doing so yet. First button does nothing. Now this one I labeled Edison because once you press this, it automatically opens Edison and starts recording within Edison. So as we press this, you'll see that it's now trying to record Edison. And once you play anything, you see it playing. So that's what that does. I don't know how handy that'll be for me, but other people it may be perfect. I don't know. But don't go crazy pressing this button because a lot of Edisons will pull up, which is quite annoying. So, just a heads up. Snap tool. Label snap because it's global snap. So if you want to record and you want it to snap, press the button and you have your snap. Now, if it's unlit, that means you're on none. If it's lit, that means you have it on whatever snap you predetermined ahead of time. I keep mine on a quarter beat. You can put it to whatever you want, obviously. But it remembers whatever position, whichever one you have on previously. So non quarter. This is the metronome. So as you can see, the metronome is now lit in the program. And you can hear the metronome. 
take it off. There you go. Countdown. This is obviously for when you want to record or want to count down before you press play. Press it on. It's lit. I keep mine on two bars. Give me enough time to prepare. Uh, default, I believe, is one bar. But once again, it's preference. So you do what you want. You keep it to whatever you want to. Uh, I usually always keep counting down on if I'm recording just to give me time. I don't like recording right off the bat. Now, this record is basically synonymous to this one. I don't know why it's already predetermined. Maybe that's just how the Mackie control was ahead of time, but this does the same thing as this. However, if you do press this record button, this one will light up to let you know that you're in record mode. However, it will not do it vice versa. If you use this one, it will not go green. But if you do this one and it'll go green, then this lights up. So you can use whatever one you want because they do the same thing. This switches between pattern and song mode. Pretty straightforward. Just on, off, on, off. And the orange light correlates to the actual pattern's orange light, which is pretty cool. Then you have your regular transport controls. You have uh, rewind. You have fast forward. You have stop. You have play. And obviously you have your record again. Which is, once again, pretty straightforward. And it works perfectly. So, if we wanted to mess with the mixer, let's go into this. So, Let's say that I want to solo a sound. So we're going to find one of my instruments. Let's go to this one, play it. OK. Now you see the level actually correlates to the actual mixer. So that's this one right here. Now let's say if I'm on this one, I want to select this channel. It's not selected right here in FL Studio because you haven't selected it up here. So if you hit channel select, you'll see it jump to the actual one that you wanted. So I'm gonna solo it. Okay, you can adjust the volume. Vice versa, if you move this, the mixer will actually, the fader will actually move with it because it's motorized, so it's pretty cool. You have your panning. Everything works how it should. And let's see, what else do you have? Dun, 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 dun. Now, if you want to bring in another one, unmute this. Now it's still solo, but the rest are actually sort of like unsoloed once you unmute it, obviously. We're gonna bring in more sounds, okay? So we're gonna bring in these. Go to them. Now you can go over with these in the mixer. Let's get back to the mixer. So we're here. Move over here. Let's say we wanna... Which one do we wanna bring in? Let's bring in this one. these you actually can move between channels too. If you press down you actually jump up four. If you press up you go back four. So you can actually go left and right which is just going one at a time which is the same thing as this. However it doesn't actually move at a studio. It moves actually uh, this moves through FL studio select but it does not change the selection right here. This actually changes the channel select here. This just moves it between the actual program. Uh, it's pretty weird. I just always use this to select because that's the purpose. I want to manipulate it with this, not with FL Studio, so I'm going to select it with this. See the level, know where I'm at, read it. So make sure you label right so you'll know what you're selecting. So if you have a lot of duplicates, you're going to be wondering trying to figure out which one is which so 
Label piano, label organ, label synth. Just so you know which one is which when you actually go through the LCD, because there's only so many words that I show up up here. Uh, if you hit the bank, I believe it jumps up. Um, I want to say eight. So if we go right here to let's go to channel two, jump up a bank. We're now on channel fifteen. So looks like it jumps up. Pretty, pretty easy if you want to switch between banks uh, sounds rather than going one at a time. You can just jump up if you have a lot of tracks. So if you're an 8, jump up, you're a 16, jump up again, you're a 24. So pretty, pretty handy. You have a lot of tracks. Um, this also selects one at a time or however you want. But it does not correlate with the mixer or the Dex Touch one as well. It, it moves and select within FS Studio, but it does not actually change it here. You still want to use this or the bank, just so you know for sure what's going on. So this, um, okay, yeah, that's the scrub tool. So if you actually like hit this, it scrubs. It's sort of like a fast forward or rewind. So once you hit it, it'll be lit. So when you twist it, it basically just scrubs through the track. So if you're in the playlist, you can scrub pretty quickly with that. If not, you're back here with the mixer. Pretty straightforward and uh, this thing is beautiful. Like I love it. It has actual two uh, USB ports on the back too. One I use for my iLot for uh, Pro Tools and all my other plugins. It saves me a port on my computer since I am taking up one with this thing. So it's perfect. Uh, it utilizes a USB and it has a, des a designated power source that you plug into an outlet. So it's pretty handy. It's pretty portable. It's small, one channel, uh, one fader enough for me because I'm going to be manipulating one sound usually one at a time anyway just that's how I do things you can do it however you want I know they have a I want to say they have a secondary attachment for these things so you can add more motorized faders or you can like uh, just group them more together but I'll probably just be sticking with this one since it's all I need and it saves space for my desk I like stuff minimalistic and to me it works out perfectly and it's, it's pretty fine for me so I can bring in all my sounds again. Let's go here. Okay, so I'm gonna select my 808. I wanna lift it, bring it back. So long. Yeah.